Hi there, I'm John of John's Carnivorous Plants. This is my indoor nursery, and today we are gonna be talking about browning heart versus watering stress in Pinguicula. Now, this is a question that comes up every so often on the Carnivorous Plant Discord of like, oh, what's going on here with my ping? And it can be uh, rather difficult to tell the difference whenever you're overwatering a ping versus whenever it's starting to develop browning heart, except in the very end stages of browning heart where quite literally the heart is entirely brown and mush. Typically speaking, with pinguicula, you will see a reduction in size because as the roots start rotting from having too much moisture, they will reduce. So you'll see like a line of like dead leaves that are, you can very clearly see a regression where the leaves aren't getting bigger than the last one, which normal healthy growth in pinguicula outside the succulent phase, they're gonna be growing continually bigger and bigger leaves. And then as winter comes, they'll do their tight packed, compact rosette. And then spring comes along and they'll start keep continuing to make bigger and bigger leaves. However, if you just recently got a pinguicula, it was already a nice big size and you're noticing it just keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller, you might be overwatering it. Browning heart, on the other hand, is a rather fast acting disease to be found in pinguicula. It's caused by a nematode that uh, allows fusarium to get into the roots of the uh, plants, which fusarium wilt is a very common environmentally present uh, disease found all throughout the United States and around the world. It's a very, very damaging uh, disease in a lot of crops, like tomatoes and all kinds of other things can get it as well. But it's very pronounced in pinguicula whenever it happens because you will notice very quickly, and I mean quickly, that the plant will literally start just, it'll literally look like it's starting to shrivel up a little bit. And then in the center of the plant, you will notice browning that occurs literally in the crown of the plant that then radiates outward. In the final stages of uh, the uh, fusarium wilt attack, you'll notice that it'll have, you know, white spore pods will start actually springing up very quickly after the pinguicula has died. And that's definitely the death knell and like, you know, signature of Eucerium is that it is now finished killing that victim and it's trying to move on to the next. However, with watering stress, you'll notice a marked reduction in size over time. The heart won't go brown. Eventually though, if you keep your, like if you're keeping Mexican pinguicula and you keep them too wet, they can rot out and it's a much different rot than what Fusarium will present in that it will cause the plant to continually reduce. You'll notice that leaf after leaf is getting smaller and the plant will just eventually, you know, just get so small and tiny in the center that it just cannot sustain itself anymore and just dies. And this is because if there's too much water, pinguicula are not quite lithophytic so like they'll grow on rock but typically with small amounts of soil in that rock and it dries out rather quickly in most cases whenever i've seen like natural pinguicula populations of vulgaris in particular or macrophylla they have been uh, on cliff faces and they were getting fed by seeps that would regularly dry out from time to time and a lot of wind action so there's a lot of oxygenation going on and evaporation so the plants are able to you know stay at a nice happy medium of moist but not sopping wet there are exceptions to this in that the pinguicula found in the southeastern portion of the united states the warm temperate ones typically occur in bogs and in some cases can even be like flooded for parts of the year and be underwater and it's a really cool behavior that is kind of unique to pinguicula in that area so like primifolia, planifolia. Um, oh, there's a couple other that are escaping me right now. But those ones will prefer to be wet. However, the vast majority of the rest of the fam, well, the rest of the genus of pinguicula, they all want to have some level of dryness throughout their watering cycle. So if you're using a tray, let the tray dry out for a day or two, like literally feel your medium. Your medium should be just very slightly moist to the touch before you refill the water. Otherwise, you're gonna lead your plants to have uh, overwatering stress. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this answered the question for you. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed and 
you know, go to my uh, shop in the uh, description, buy a plant, help support the channel, or just hop in my Discord and come say hi. I enjoy seeing everyone else's plants. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you on the next one.